I can't do this all on my own. (laughs) I'm no Superman, and I don't have to be. We're going to be talking about the power of collaboration, as well as checking out a shredding hard rock cue featuring my personal guitar hero, Donnie Wayne Smith, on this week's Vlog Checking. What is happening, YouTube? This is Dave Croft. Thank you so much for joining me for my week 17 check-in. And if this is your first time, welcome aboard. I'm so glad that you found me, however you found me, the YouTube algorithm or maybe the Facebook group or or maybe a friend or I don't know, maybe the universe just conspired to have you join me. Uh, welcome to my week 17 check-in where every week I take a look at a cue that I've written in the week before as well as talk about things that are going on in the industry, maybe things that are going on with me professionally, or or just things that are effervescing into my consciousness or whatever. And so um, today we're going to be talking about the power of collaboration. Now, if you want to get straight ahead to the uh, to the cue breakdown, you can check out the uh, information or the uh, timestamp in the description below. But before we get started, I do want to give a special thanks to the patrons who helped to make this channel possible. Thank you guys so much. Be sure to tune in at the end so you can see their names fly by at a, at a nearly unreadable pace. But um, but really, really, they help keep the channel going and they join us for live streams and all this kind of thing. So so that's, uh, I want to give a special thanks to them. And as well, if, uh, if you haven't already, please give that like, subscribe, all of the typical YouTuber kind of business because it helps feed the algorithm and it helps composers just like you find this video. If you enjoy it and you like it, go ahead and do all of the smashing of buttons and such. Uh, and uh, and yeah, and if you ever have any uh, questions or comments, please leave those in the comments below because I do read all of them. I read all of the comments and I make every effort to respond as much as I can. So I wanted to talk about my week that, that came before. If you've been following the channel, you know that I'm in the middle of this big, giant, happy ukulele project, and I'm writing 15 ukulele cues, and and I'm, I'm, I'm learning more about ukulele technique and strings and, and the wood and, and, and fingerings and, and strumming patterns than I ever thought I would know. But uh, I've really been enjoying that, and and that deliverable is this week. This Friday, actually, is, is when that deliverable is due. I could probably push it to a Saturday or Sunday if needed. But right in the middle of that, the same publisher that I'm writing those for came at me with a really big opportunity to write some rock cues. I can't talk about what that opportunity is. If it pans out, believe me, you guys will hear about it. If uh, if that gets placed, I promise you, I, I will be I will be talking all about it. Um, but I, I feel like I can show you the cue. And so these big rock, kind of classic rock hair metal, heavy metal, hard rock, all of that kind of all blurred together. And I knew that I can't do that on my own. Don't don't let the guitar hanging in the background fool you. I am not a guitarist. I can do like open tuning and, and power chords and all of that, but but I am I am not a a rock guitarist, certainly a guitarist of the caliber that needs to to be on a track that I needed to produce for this opportunity. And so that's when I knew that I needed to call in the big guns. In this case, one big gun, his name is Donnie Wayne Smith, a buddy of mine who, uh, if you've watched the channel, if you've checked out the Power Swing uh, breakdown, I think it's called the Uplifting Rock, and I'll try to have a, a link to Power Swing in uh, like floating around here. So you can check that out where I do a breakdown. And that was several years ago that I worked on that, like six years ago, six or seven years ago that I worked with Donnie. And if uh, Donnie, Donnie Smith, I was in a cover band with back in my Memphis days. And uh, we, we made a lot of really good music together. And he is Winger's touring guitarist. And, uh, and whatever you think about Winger, you know, the, the band from the eighties and the nineties, they uh, they have a really big following. You know, they play like sellout concert venues. So uh, so they they still they still are out doing their thing. 
And so Donnie is their touring guitarist, which is no surprise because he's an amazing, an amazing guitarist. And he is so good at what he does. And I knew this early on. He has just not, not just the shredding chops. He has a real ear for tone. And, and he would show up at gigs with like a pod, a pod pedal, line six pod and a speaker. He didn't roll in a bunch of cabs and all that business, right? He would just roll in with his pod and a speaker and he would shred and melt faces. And whenever we would play a cover tune, whether it's Pour Some Sugar On Me or Hotel California, not only did he play the, the, the solos and the guitar parts note for note, but he matched the tone like exactly. It sounded like the record. And so I picked up on that earlier, very early on. And so it's no surprise that 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 winger scooped him up and, and and brought him on tour. Beyond that, he is one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet, a real true family man and uh, just just a, a genuinely good nice person, which I think is it, that's that's currency in this industry. Being nice, being easy to work with, along with having the abilities and the skills. I think just being easy and, and nice and fun to work with, that makes all the difference. So it took six years for me to circle back, but I finally called Donnie up. I'm like, hey, bud, would you be interested in this opportunity? I need pedal to the metal, hard rock, and I know that you just ooze this stuff. And he said, thankfully, he said yes. And he got to work. And I think later that evening, he's like, ooh, here's, here's an idea. And here's another idea. And so within one or two days, he had seven riffs, seven sketches. He ate really, but he took one because he didn't like it. He's like, nope. So we ended up with seven sketches. That, that we could run with. And that really got me, got, got me all fired up because he just, he took it and, and, and ran with it. He started sending me guitar stems and working back and forth. And I did the drum programming. I, I'd laid some synths down on some, some of the other cues and some string parts, did the final mixing and the final mastering and, and all of that. But what I wanted to talk about today is how collaborating isn't a sign of weakness. Now, maybe you don't think that, but, but I used to think, I used to think that I, I did have to do it all my own. I used to think that, that I had to get good at all of these instruments because, you know, especially in production music where there's not a lot of front end money and, and how are you going to, how are you going to balance that out? I can't pay like Donnie out of pocket. Really? when I'm writing, writing things on spec. Well, you, you don't have to. If you're a composer and you're thinking that you have to do this all by yourself, you don't. I promise there is power in collaboration. One of, one of my, my kind of mantras for 2021 is together we are better. Together we are better. Right? The end result is greater than the pieces. Like the sum is greater than the parts, right? That's, that's absolutely what collaboration is about. Because Donnie brings this, you know, this rock guitar stuff. And he just, like I said, he just oozes it. It just comes out of it. His ear for tone, working with plugins. He did all of this in his, in his home studio. As far as I know, I don't think he mic'd up a cab at all. I think this is all like in the box. And he knows it really well. But he brings what he does. I bring what I do. And we come together and we make something that neither of us could really do by ourselves. And that's the real key to why we should collaborate. Yes, to, to, to pick up the slack and the skills that you don't have, in my case, like rock guitar. That's a, that's a real hole in my, my, uh, my catalog is, is like good old fashioned rock because I'm never going to get there. And to be honest, I don't, I don't have any 
desire to get there. I don't have any desire to sit there and like run pentatonic shapes on a guitar neck. Just like Donnie probably doesn't have a desire to, to learn about, you know, intricate key switching and, and string libraries and everything. But collaborating isn't, isn't just about filling what you can't do as a composer. It's about drawing on each other's energy. It's about working together towards a mutual goal that the end result is, is better than either of you ever could have done on your own. And that absolutely happened last week. It was, it was, it was, <laughs> this is going to sound so cheesy. It was kind of magical. Now, right? It, it was, it was like, he would feed me something and he would send me something and I would get so like geeked out about it. I'd go into the studio and I'd start working and then, and then we would open up a zoom window and, uh, and I would like text him an MP3. What do you think of these three measures? And he would say, Ooh, try this. And I would say, Ooh, try that. And it became this kind of back and forth electric environment that fed on itself to where by the end, we ended up with three cues. We started with seven, eight sketches. We ended up with three cues that I am so enormously proud of that I quite literally listened to them all weekend long. Put them on my phone, listened to my headphones in my car. I'm sure I was driving Shannon crazy, my wife. But she's a musician and she gets it. And that is the power of collaboration. You find someone that really you can resonate with, someone that could feed your muse and you're feeding their muse and it becomes this feedback loop, no pun intended, but a feedback loop of creative. It's like this creative momentum, this avalanche of output that just is almost unstoppable. You guys know that, that I get up super early. Like today I was up at four o'clock. It's seven 30 in the morning, Eastern time here. And so I was up at, at, at 4 AM this morning. And last week I was up until uh, Thursday night, which was right before the, the, the deliverables were due. I was up until about one o'clock. Now, suffice it to say, I did not get up at 4 AM Friday morning because that was what, what, what the, uh, the moment called for, but I'm here to encourage you to reach out to anybody you might know, anybody in your past, maybe somebody you've met on the forums, and then just offer to start collaborating, even if it doesn't turn into anything. But Donnie and I were in a cover band 10, 12, 15 years ago. Oh my God, has it been that long? And he did, he did some work for me back uh, six or seven years ago. And just last week, we connected and we're having this, this really, really great time. I mean, I definitely feel like I'm getting the better end of the deal. I get the feeling that he feels the same way. And I think that is, is, the, is the basis of a really good, solid collaboration. Yes, really good, solid collaboration. Now, I, I want to take a moment and talk about how a production music composer can, quote unquote, pay for collaboration. Okay. Well, the first, the first way is, is just, uh, if, if you want to work with somebody, is just pay them money. But that's really tough in a production music world because we write so much on spec. We, we get very little upfront money. And so out of pocket is really, really tough. And I get that, which is why you can compensate your collaborators in other ways. So one way is to trade services. And that's what Donnie did, Donnie and I did back on Power Swing. We traded services. He played some guitar for me. I played some harmonica for him. We signed a little, you know, work for hire agreement and all of that. And then we're done. But if you're really looking to be collaborators and not just kind of a work for hire, which we are, me and Donnie are, then I would encourage you to just go 50-50 on the royalty splits. 
just don't 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 squabble over royalty cuts. I have found that that uh, if you're really looking to collaborate, then trying to say like I'm doing 73% of the work and you're doing 20, you know, that I, I think that just kind of leads to I don't know angst or whatever. And this is something that a fellow composer turned me on to. He's like, you know what, just call it 50 50 and and it just simplifies everything. And if something if you're working with someone and you feel like it has become inequitable, then just kind of just say I, I I'm unable to do that. Which I've I've had before. I've done that before. I've collaborated and that same uh, the same collaborator wants to work on something a little bit later, but it really either wasn't the right time for me or whatever. And I've just kind of had to step away and say, I'm sorry, I'm unable to do that right now. And that's cool. Well, what I didn't get into is like squabbling over splits. I, I personally, I, I just, I just think that doesn't work out. But what I do look for is every opportunity that where I can bring extra things to the table. What can I what can I do? I can I can mix and master. I can I can put on my producing hat, my arranging hat. So if Donnie is sending me, you know, guitar stems and bass stems and I'm laying in drums, then what else can I bring to the project to where at least I feel like I'm making an equitable contribution to this? And I think the end result is absolutely fabulous. Now, I'm going to have Donnie's, uh, a link to Donnie's YouTube channel. He has a great YouTube channel. He does some live streaming stuff. He has a Patreon and all of that as well that, that, uh, that I am a member of. I'm subscribed. He subscribes to me. And, and we're both just kind of, um, you know, pouring into each, each other's projects, but uh, collaborating. I encourage you to do it. I encourage you to find someone that really resonates with you and um, give it a shot. Don't be afraid. Don't, don't feel like you have to do it on the, all on your own. And, talking to myself here, don't feel like bringing in someone is somehow some compositional weakness. Because together, we are better. And with that, let's check out a cue called Bump Draft Daredevils, which features, like I said, features uh, my guitar hero, Donnie Smith, on, on lead guitar and all, he, all guitar and, and bass. And even he brought in a collaborator to lay down some B3. So with that, let's check out Bump Draft Daredevils, and then we'll talk about it on the other side.
Ah, that was Bump Draft Daredevils. It's so freaking good, Donnie. And I, I kept saying, like, Donnie freaking Smith because uh, it's, he's just so good. He's just so good. Uh, so let's break these down kind of uh, one by one. And uh, and the first thing that he kind of sent sent along to me were these uh, these these kind of these riffs. Now these are uh, double tracked, so I have a left channel and a right channel that I have grouped up here in Logic, so that you know as I move them. And then he has uh, one which is centered, so it's a mono channel. Then I went ahead and threw on a little bit of uh, a little bit of delay, just a sample delay, just to wind it out. Here it is, very centered, which is okay. But I just think when you widen it out, putting on that sample delay by about 20 milliseconds just tends to, uh, I don't know, just make, lets it breathe just a little bit, especially when you're dealing with uh, with tracks that are gonna have dialogue right down the center, then I find that kind of pushing things to the side tends to work out pretty well. And then we have uh, our bass channel. I'll come back to my lead here in a second. So the guitar is really, really very straightforward. All right, we have a clean bass channel. Now you'll notice there is very little processing, very little processing, some EQ, uh, and I've done the channel EQ as well as uh, some, uh, some uh, Pro Q3, because Donnie baked in all of the effects and everything into the stem itself. I told him I don't don't send me any like guitar plugins and everything. Uh, not only you know I don't have those, but I trust his ear. And if we're looking to crank out crank these things out, I think we had about five days to turn these around. Yeah, I think uh, we started working on Sunday. I think I got the message on Saturday, and uh, then Sunday is when we got to work, and then they were delivered Thursday night. So we had about five days. And I'm telling you, within 24 hours, Donnie had like seven or eight sketches ready to go, and uh, they were just really, really roughs. And uh, I wonder if I can uh, if I can pull up uh, one of the rough sketches for this one. I can't remember which one it was. No, nope, not that one. <laughs> Yeah, so this is this is the sketch that he sent me. You know, he laid down some kind of some right, just a little, just a little sixty-second sketch. No, nothing, nothing really, but but enough to to get us going. And and when all the sketches were done, we got together and a resume call and we listened to each one and and we kind of mutually agreed which ones had the most legs right which ones are the most uh just got got us creatively going and so we chose four actually we chose five and uh we we decided that in in five days if we we would be happy to have three it'd be great if we have four we'd be lucky if we got five and we got the three done, and we we started pushing into number four, and we had enough time to get a fourth one, but we just we just weren't feeling it. It was good. The fourth one was okay, but it just the other three were so solid that uh, we didn't. Uh, we just kind of stopped it. We just called it. We're like, you know what? It's just not happening. Let's not force it. We have three that we really believe in, and we don't want to send a fourth to kind of diminish the other three. All right, so. Um, so there's the clean bass, and this really gnarly distorted bass. And then he had a buddy of his come in and lay in some B3 using, um, this is just stock logic, uh, stock logic B3. There is nothing at all fancy about this. And the reason I like the logic B3 is is that the uh, the sustain pedal controls the uh, the Leslie 
and the mod wheel controls the, the, the tone bars. And so by working both, you can get some really, really nice sounds. Oof. And then the last stem that he gave me, well, we, we had sent a rough off to the, uh, to the publisher. And because of the way that this cue is gonna be used, He's like, you, you, I want Donnie to solo over the whole thing. Just, just shred, blow the whole time. And so Donnie gave me, uh, he actually gave me two, uh, two guitar parts, two lead passes that I compressed into one and, and essentially made a, a guitar solo out of it. Right, so there's an edit. And the edit here. <laughs> Tony freaking Smith, right? And so it was my decision uh, as kind of the, the arranger producer of this, of, of, of where the lead was going to come in, where it was going to go out, as well as uh, he sent me a couple of uh, different bass feels. So, so when are we going to like... Uh, driving eighth notes to quarter note bass feels and that kind of thing. And so that's what led me to the overall arrangement. And I'm, believe me, I'm getting to the drums here in, in a moment. And so uh, the arrangement starts off with the, the overall hook. Now, if it sounds like a Home Depot commercial or an interstate car battery type of GMC ad, mission accomplished. That's absolutely the vibe we were going for with this. So we have the hook, and then we have the B section. Right, and so then we go back to the A section. Repeat the A section, this time with the lead, into the B section, then we, then we come out of the A section into a breakdown. Now this is very standard production music form. And you can see a lot of editing in here because I brought in and started like chopping up all the bass parts here. I wanted a boom, 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 boom. And then we take off into a double time. Now, when Donnie sent this to me, he had no idea that we were going to go into a double time. But this is something that I absolutely love as a drummer, and something that my wife Shannon, who is a music director, loves this kind of thing too, and even loves when you pull out of a double time into like a halftime groove. All right, so we go into this kind of jump chorus, and so Donnie brings in a, a new guitar, kind of a shout chorus kind of thing. All right, and so we, we do this, we're, we're banging all to give increased energy into this halftime thing, which my wife Shannon loves. And, and this is something that, that, uh, that she actually calls for a lot in, in, our, in our church services, actually, as we're like doing a double time, then we'll do a big halftime kind of move. And you can see here, this is some arrangement where I took the tag repeat and then I gave that back to Donnie and Donnie laid in uh, once once uh, once we got into the double time he retracked this shout chorus with this pick scrape man and so retract and then added these guitar stabs these they wow And then it all kind of echoes from there in some delay. 
So let's get into the drums. Now, when Donnie sent me these sketches, I was like, man, these drums sound great. Why do they sound so good? What plugins are you using? Because I'm used to like Superior Drummer or using uh, contact drummers, the Abbey Road drummers, or st studio drummers, or whatever. And he said, well, they're from a company called Get Good Drums, and Get Good is, I think, the guy's name, Nolly Get Good. And I'm using a, a plugin called One Kit Wonder. Well, first of all, that's a super clever name for, for a, a drum plugin. But the whole point of the One Kit Wonder is to be an easy-to-use, great-sounding kit right out of the box for non-drummers, specifically like guitarists so that they can like demo or track. And this thing 100% lives up to the hype. Now I've got my mastering chain, so it's being a little squirrely. And all my processes is creating all kind of latency, but you get the idea. So let me actually solo this. And, and there are precious little things to tweak on this. I have parallel and master EQ. I have no control over what this Q, EQ looks like. I do have some, um, some balancing things uh, and some mixing options so I can send like more kick into the overheads and that kind of thing. But as far as like tweaking the tuning on the snare drum, nope. Uh, the toms, right? Nope. Can I swap out what symbols I want to use? Nope. Can I adjust this EQ? Can I adjust the uh, strength of the parallel compression? Nope. But you know what? That's its strength. It does one thing, but man, it does it exceedingly, exceedingly well. Now, full disclosure, I did add a little bit of my own parallel compression, throwing it into the one knob, which uh, is also indicative of the type of type of producer I am because I am a composer first and I am not an engineer. And so if I can find plugins which save me time and sound great out of the box, see also Project Sam strings. That's why I love Symphobia that just sounds good out of the box. Then I'm all about that. And these just sound so freaking good right out of the box. And detailed, lots of velocity layers. Now, I did get this question um, in, uh, in the Facebook group, uh, do I pencil everything in or do I play? I tend to play everything in on a MIDI keyboard and, um, and then I will go in and pencil and adjust as necessary or as needed. I will, I will uh, play everything in, quantize it, usually pretty tight, and then lessen the quantization. This is because I've reopened, it doesn't show it. I think this was like, uh, I think it was quantize swing C at about 80% or 75%. Quantization strength, that way it captures some of the performance, some of the inconsistencies, the organic inconsistencies of my performance without sounding mechanical, but still compensating for any latency or, I mean, or user error. Now, I come at this as a drummer, and so I play this as a drummer would play it, which means that I'm thinking what my right hand is doing, my right hand's playing the crash, and then when it's done, it's gonna move back over to the hat, and so that's what's going on there. That's why there's no hi-hat on the downbeat in the, in the crash right hand over here. Into that china. So it just sounds so good. And here it is uh, going into the double time. Into the half time, inspired by Shannon. Big, big half time. Right, And so uh, when I do this, uh, when I program drums, uh, I tend to take one pass where it's just usually kick and snare, and then I'll add uh, the cymbal work, 
and then I will add the uh, tom work. And so that is that is Bump Draft Daredevils, and I'm so happy and so glad. I'm so glad that Donnie said yes. So if somebody comes to you wanting to collaborate and you have the bandwidth for it, say yes. Who knows what'll what'll happen? Who knows what kind of relationship will 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 blossom maybe five years or 15 years later or maybe five months later or maybe in a week you'll crank out three tunes which hopefully will not only score you tons of royalties you're right knock on wood god willing speaking that into the universe but will also be something that you are both so incredibly proud of that regardless of what happens you have no regrets i have no regrets we've left it all out on the field and so uh, I'm really, really uh, happy that Donnie, uh, Donnie said yes to that. But that's going to do it for me for my week 17 check-in. As always, uh, thank you for watching. If you haven't already, hit that like, subscribe, all the standard YouTube stuff. It really does help composers find this, uh, find the channel. Also, a big shout out to my patrons who give their real-life, actual, hard-earned money to help keep this channel afloat. If you're interested in joining, Patrons start just at a dollar. So uh, patrons also have access to my weekly live streams. Last week during the weekly live stream, I I programmed drums for another rock queue and uh, and I did that live. So so yeah, thank you guys so much for joining me. Until next time, peace. <laughs>